Hi! Who are you? I'm Wally Waterdrop. How'd you get in here? Have you ever wondered where that water goes when you flush? You don't even have arms. How'd you open the door? Don't you ever think about the water washing down your drain or sink? No, I haven't thought about it. I'm just glad it goes away. What if I told you all the water from your toilets, sinks, and even the rain hitting streets and rooftops ends up back in the environment? You mean Lake Erie? I thought it went to a landfill or something. I thought you said you never thought about it. Well, it has crossed my mind. But it can't go back to the lake like that, where people play and swim and fish all summer. You bet it can't. It takes a lot of work to clean that water and protect the environment, and that's a job for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Okay, you've got my attention. Then come on, let me show you where it goes and why it's so important. So how'd you open the door with no arms? You're not more surprised that you're talking to a water drop? Now, I'm water, obviously. I can be found all over the place, but to help you understand where I go with the flow, we'll start here, the drain. Very dramatic. My friend, visualize this if you will. The dirty water from your home travels through your city's local sewer. I call them the side streets of the sewer system. Those side street sewers are connected to big pipes called interceptor sewers. They're the highways of the sewer system. The interceptor takes the dirty water to the wastewater treatment plant where it's cleaned by the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Once it's cleaned, it's returned to Lake Erie. In one day, the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District treats and returns about 230 million gallons of water to Lake Erie. So wait, the water I flush at home gets cleaned and ends up back in the lake? Wow, I never thought about that. So what about rain? Does it end up in the sewers too? Well, that depends. Raindrops land on different surfaces. There are pervious surfaces, which soak up the rainwater, and impervious surfaces. Hard ones like driveways, roofs, and parking lots. Rain doesn't soak into impervious surfaces. Instead, it flows quickly over the top of them to the nearest body of water or the nearest sewer. And here's where it gets interesting. Okay, I'm listening. A lot of communities have separate sewers. That means there's one pipe for the dirty water from your home that flows to the treatment plant. And there's one pipe for storm water, basically rain or melting snow, and that flows right to the nearest river or the lake. So that water doesn't get treated. Right, in separate sewer communities, storm water flows right back to the environment. But in other communities, there's one pipe that carries both dirty water from your home and storm water. It's called a combined sewer because the water flowing through the pipe is a combination of household dirty water and storm water. Some of these combined pipes are more than 100 years old. That combination of water travels to the wastewater treatment plant where it's cleaned and then released back to the environment. That's good, right? Most of the time, yes. But during rainstorms, the pipes can become too full. And to prevent flooding in homes or treatment plants during heavy rains, these old sewers were designed to discharge some of the combined flow, mostly storm water, to the nearest stream. What about the rain that never reaches a sewer? Like in our yards or open fields? Well, some of it soaks into the ground, and the rest flows over the land to the nearest body of water, like a stream. That's called runoff. Runoff picks up and carries pollution that can affect water quality. Is that why swimming advisories are posted at local beaches after heavy storms? Exactly! Runoff and storm sewers can both affect water quality. Alright, I'm starting to get it straight. There's dirty water from our homes and that goes to the sewer district where it's cleaned and released to the environment. You got it! 
Then there's storm water. The sewer district cleans some of it, or it flows in sewers or over the land right back to the lake and streams. Bingo! That's where it goes. Now I know you're just a water drop, but let me get technical for a second. What's really being done to keep our water clean? Well, since I know you're not a water drop, I'll keep it simple. Stormwater has a lot of impacts, and the sewer district is doing a lot to reduce those impacts. In the combined sewer system, one approach is to construct large tunnels to be used when the combined pipes become too full. These huge tunnels will store untreated water until the sewer district is able to clean it. The first tunnel like this in Greater Cleveland is the Mill Creek Tunnel, built by the sewer district to connect to one of its treatment plants. It runs more than 200 feet underground and is more than 20 feet wide at some points. At full capacity, it will hold 75 million gallons of water until the treatment plant can give it the best treatment a little bit at a time. Are there going to be more of these tunnels? The sewer district's planning on it. Over the next few decades, the plan would capture a lot of the overflow from combined sewers and reduce the number of untreated discharges to the environment by more than 4 billion gallons. 4 billion gallons? I can't even imagine what that means. Just imagine that a bathtub of water is Lake Erie. The amount of water released from combined sewers in one year during storms is about one tablespoon of water. When the tunnels are done, the number of discharges will be equal to less than a drop from a medicine dropper. Thanks for the visual, but get out of my bathroom. Um, sorry. Other than tunnels, the sewer district's doing even more. It's developing a stormwater management program. It's a big deal because it doesn't work one city at a time. The sewer district program would manage the stormwater flow from storm sewers across the region, covering 61 communities. Because when rain falls in one community, oops, it can and does affect its neighbors as the water flows in pipes and streams. These problems have been growing for a long time, affecting residents and also aquatic life. That's why the sewer district thinks it will take a regional program to reduce these problems. When's this program going to begin? The district's talking to communities now, so it's still in the works, but there are updates on the sewer district's website. I never knew the sewer district was doing so much. Is there anything I can do to help? Generally, it's just good to stay informed. The district has a lot of information available about its clean water work. And during beach season, I'd also tell young kids and senior citizens to enjoy the beach, but maybe stay out of the water, just after heavy storms when the water might be dirty. The sewer district has a lot of work ahead to keep our water clean. It's not easy, but when you think that the lake and Cuyahoga River have been getting cleaner and cleaner for more than 35 years, you can see how far I've come with the sewer district's help. Wally, I've got to say, this has been very helpful. Probably the most helpful conversation that ever began in a bathroom. I'll take your word for it. Well, gotta flow. And remember, next time any of your friends wonder, where does it go? Now I know. It all comes back to us. Cleaner. Thanks to the regional sewer district. Because clean water is everyone's business. It sure is, Wally. It sure is. <laughs>